Welcome back, history lovers. In this episode, we dive into the makings and creation of who would be known as the Colorado Cannibal. Sit back, grab a seat, and hold on tight as our latest edition is not for the faint of heart. Viewer discretion is advised. In the harsh winter of 1873, a group of prospectors set out into the unforgiving wilderness of the Colorado Rockies in search of fortune. Led by the enigmatic figure of Alfred Packer, they embarked on a journey that would descend into infamy. On the morning of April 16, 1874, the agents who worked at Los Pinos Indian Agency, someone flinging open their door, in walked a man clearly distressed. With the snowstorm howling outside, the agents working in this agency near Sawatch, Colorado, let him in and treated him to some breakfast. The disheveled man was so hungry, he ate and threw up immediately. Then, over many whiskeys, he began to tell the men of his horrific journey over the mountains. He described his fellow travelers as weak and unable to continue their journey. They suffered from snow blindness, frostbite, and eventually left Alfred to fend for himself. Alfred ate rabbits, roots, and plants to store his energy as he dangerously trekked through the Colorado mountains. He claimed that it was experience as a guide that got him out alive. But how did Packer end up on this expedition? Several months earlier, Packer joined a group in Utah, around Bingham Canyon that traversed the interstate journey in hopes of reaching Breckenridge, Colorado. Breckenridge had become the hotspot of the gold rush for the state, and the papers had claimed anyone with any sense of prospecting could become rich around the area. Originally, Alfred claimed that with his guide skills, he could lead them from Utah to Colorado. He was a little odd and described by his fellow travelers as greedy, lazy, and constantly complained during their journey. Ultimately, with a little luck, he led them just outside Montrose, Colorado. With temperatures extremely low for the area and a nasty winter endured, the prospectors and Alfred Packer were ready to make the journey over the Rocky Mountains to Breckenridge. During their short stint in Montrose, they came across a band of Indians known as the Utes. They met with a leader named Chief Ure. Contrary to what you might think, the Utes had good relationships with prospectors, and because the men looked so ragged, the chief gave them food and shelter. He advised them to stay with them until the weather got better. Then men still had over 100 miles to get to Breckenridge. Because it was February and the weather hadn't gotten better, Chief Ure mentioned that no Ute would dare make that crossing. It would result in certain death. Still, the group was worried that all the gold would be gone if they waited until spring, and they decided, against the advice of the chief, that they would head out and make the trek. They left half the group behind to watch the wagons and horses, while the other half would make the daunting trek to Breckenridge. Thus, our horrific story begins. They followed the Gunnison River in hopes of traversing the deadly route. The brutal cold took its toll on the group. They would have all perished if not found by some cowhands halfway through their trip. Without any supplies, they stayed with the cowhands until spring. In May, they found their way to the Los Pinos Indian Agency, and to the agency's surprise, only Alfred showed up. Things get mysterious from here. Alfred claimed he had survived on rabbits and rosebuds, but he looked well-fed and almost bloated coming into the agency. A man who traversed the dangerous trail with little food or snowshoes shouldn't have looked like this. The men at the agency would have expected him to be almost like a walking skeleton. After Packer settled in, he went to the nearest town and began a gambling and drinking spree to the tune of over a thousand dollars. While liquored up, he gave conflicting stories about what had happened. Packer often used multiple wallets filled with cash that was unexplained at the time. How did he get all this cash? All he sold was one gun for $10. The rest of the accumulated money remained a mystery. Remember the other half of the party that stayed with Chief Ure? The leader of that party finally caught up to Packer in the town of Sawwatch. He had questions as well. The leader quickly began asking questions, as Alfred was known to be a liar. He knew Packer had no money, and the gun he sold belonged to another man in his party. He knew none of the other men would have left Packer for dead. 
lies upon lies began building up. The general of the town wanted to bring Packer in for questioning. They asked Alfred where he got the money and how he was the only one who managed to survive the horrible weather and somehow turned up well-fed and healthy. Alfred started by saying how one night the men went to go look for food and he stayed by the fire while drying up his shoes. He claimed the men never returned and in his mind left him for dead. An investigative group was eventually formed to look into the details. And just when they were to begin the investigation, the Ute tribe showed up with pieces of human flesh they found on the mountainside. Upon seeing this, Alfred Packer freaked out and fainted. When he woke up, he had a completely different story to tell. Alfred went on to explain that 10 days into their journey, they ran out of food. Men began dying one by one, and as each man died, the other men began to eat them to stay alive. Down to two men in the group, a man named Shannon Bell began to fire on Alfred Packer. Packer claimed that in self-defense, he shot Bell. Then, a little while later, he finally stumbled into the agency. After writing all of this down, Packer signed a sworn statement detailing the traumatic events. The general didn't believe any of this and eventually charged Packer with manslaughter. In the summer, the general rounded up his men to go searching for the remains of the bodies left behind. They found nothing and returned Packer to the jail. But the lost men would soon be found. It took an unsuspecting man traveling the trail near the Gunnison River in late August to reveal the horror from the previous spring. He was met by a nasty smell and ultimately found remains sticking up from the ground. He went into town to report the horror of seeing the human remains stripped to the bone. The search party ensued and what they saw could not be unseen. Decomposing bodies, blunt force trauma to their heads, and they even identified Shannon Bell as one of the men who met their fateful death the spring before. Bodies stripped down to only their bones and feet. It was clear that when it was all said and done, the bodies were eaten. In a crazy turn of events, months after the bodies were discovered, someone slipped Packer a key while in his jail cell, and Alfred was able to escape for nine years. It is not clear who did this, nor why but Alfred had all but ran away from his first-degree murder charges. In 1883, a man in Cheyenne, Wyoming, went into a general store for supplies. One of the original prospectors who ended up staying with Chief Ure ran the store and talked to the man claiming to be John Schwartz. The man looked eerily familiar. He wondered if it was a John Schwartz he prospected with a decade earlier in the Colorado mountains. After taking a second look, the man running the general store realized it was Alfred Packer. He alerted the authorities, and Packer was brought back to Denver to await trial. At this point, the gig was up, and Packer began to tell his final story of what really happened a decade earlier. Packer started by saying they had left camp with not near enough food for their journey. He claimed it was only enough food for a single man to last one week. Then, they were hit with a brutal snowstorm and it got to the point where they couldn't even walk. Eventually, one by one, as the men faltered and their bodies began to fail, he would hit them with rocks while they slept, crushing their skulls. He then began to eat their flesh while the other men went scouting. All men eventually perished from the same tactic. At his trial, the prosecution laid out the case that everything was premeditated. Alfred took the stand and all but admitted to eating the bodies, killing Shannon, in an effort to survive. The jury found Alfred guilty of murder in the first degree. However, due to technicalities, Alfred's murder sentence was revoked, and he had to be tried again, but only for manslaughter. The new prosecution brought in several hunters from the area, claiming at that time of year, food was plentiful, and there would be no reason to eat human flesh. Alfred was found guilty of manslaughter and his sentence ended up being the longest in U.S. history at the time. Forty years. Eight years for every man he killed and ate. In the end, Alfred Packer became known as the Colorado Cannibal. His legacy is one filled with heartbreak and trauma. Almost everyone has thought about facing immensely dire conditions and inevitably asks themselves, if I needed to survive and had no food left, would I eat the other person next to me? In Alfred Packer's case, 
Nike proved that some people might do just that. Thank you for watching this latest episode from History Haven. Please subscribe and like the video, and wait for another tale from the annals of history.